Hey guys, so today I am gonna talk about the very dramatic event of telling somebody their collection is not worth what they believe it is. So a lot of people are desperately selling their magic cards right now and they put a lot of money into the collection, uh, either sealed or singles, and that money has been long gone and there's no liquidity. You know, if you ask me like what is actually selling, it is Lord of the Rings and it is a specific type of pack. Collector's edition packs as people search for the ring, therefore all this money that would normally be going towards vintage and reserve lists is going towards Lord of the Rings for really, really obvious reasons. Uh, so when somebody has a collection and they want to sell it for cash because they're desperate, they need money for rent, they need money for their mortgage, it creates this really tough scenario and it is very uncomfortable telling them the honest truth, but you have to tell them because it, it's your price point is so different. Um, I have been buying collections and I have lost money on every single collection I bought recently and it is not a good feeling and it's not something that i will continue to do moving in for futures but then people will ask hey you didn't respond to my email out of like courtesy sometimes i don't respond because i i you you want ten thousand dollars for a collection that might be worth two thousand dollars retail and i understand you spent a lot of money for your collection. I understand that uh, on paper it looks pretty good, but it's impossible to move. So back to my initial assessment on this thing, I'm just, I just stopped buying collections, not because I don't think a good deal exists. I think a great deal, I think you can get great deals, but because of the animosity, because of the back and forth and also the nature what I'm, I'm trying to say is uh, it is very, very difficult right now buying a collection from if, if you are emotional, if you're that type of type of person. You hear desperation story after desperation story. Oh, um, and they involve kids and wives and significant others and dogs. And they're all just on the verge of passing away if you don't buy this collection. And again, how much is, this is exaggerated? I think some of it, of course, is exaggerated, but I also think some of it is true that people did view their collections as some type of investment. And when you uh, buy it, when you buy and you hold, it seems all good because Rudy Chan tells you that prices are going up. You know, he shows you videos in TCG Player of TCG Mids of you know huge vendors with hundreds of thousands of sales, and supposedly you're going to be able to compete against that as a individual person with zero sales. Um, when it actually comes time to sell, people get hit in the face by the reality of selling. Selling is not easy. It is not fun to do. And on, it is very easy buying and being told that this is an investment. You buy some vintage magic boxes uh, and then they go down 50, 60% of price. Are you really going to be able to sell them at a loss at these sunken fall? And you know, and I know, and you know, it is not what you paid for. And that's one of the more difficult uh, conversations. And it's not a conversation I even need to have. And that's why I'm not buying any magic collections or Pokemon or sports cards. Uh, Pokemon, I may buy a little bit more, but I have a massive sealed collection that we're going to open on this channel. And you know, to really kind of hammer home why this is so interesting to me, when you talk about cards as an investment, uh, you then it comes time, and this is typical of everything. When you invest in it, everyone else is investing in, in it, and when you have to sell it because maybe you have financial difficulties of your own, you realize everyone else is trying to sell the same thing as you. And there's not actually that much demand anymore for these investment. And in particular, I think sealed boxes, sealed vintage boxes, you don't need to believe me. You can watch an alpha investment video where he laments on it dropping 50 to 60% in price from the hype. And he was buying at those prices. So when I talk about the one one ring chase, that's kind of a very different issue. That's why, that's where all the money is heading. 
Uh, can I see a one-on-one -on -one, uh, Beast Wars card or My Little Pony card uh, in the future or Power Rangers? Yeah, I, absolutely. Why would they not do it if this model is so damn successful? And they don't need to reprint any of the cards, even though they ha kind of have in the Magic 30th. They just need to print better ones. It, it really was that simple all along. The one on one ring, the, the one ring is a pretty powerful card, guys. I mean, that card is bonkers crazy in EDH. And when you talk about how you can get rid of the reserve list, the question is, do you even have to? Why not continue to print serialized cards, continue to pump those out, and, and you see the reception is very positive. Uh, XQC, I just saw Maximilian Pokemon, a uh, huge Pokemon channel, and he is now opening this, this set. I've never seen him open any Magic the Gathering, uh, and now he's opening Magic the Gathering to get this set, which is pretty crazy in my opinion. So that's that's the honest truth of why I don't buy collections. I do not need that confrontation. I do not need that additional stress in my life where it's a dude who's arguing over you. I mean, I get his standpoint. I get their standpoint. They put a lot of money into something somebody told them was an investment. They lost money, massive amounts of money, and now they're going to sell and they realize, and, and this may be the first time they are faced with the fact that they invested in something that lost a lot of money. And you are you might be the first person to tell them that this, to give them a realistic, ex the expectations these a lot of these people have are not based in reality of the current market. They're still living in uh, the PPP loan period where you could ask the government for a few million, they'd give it to you and forgive you. Very different time today than it was back then. Than it was back then even though it was only a few years ago. So that's why I personally am not going to buy more Magic Collections. I, I would buy Inuyasha. I would probably take a look at Pokemon. I do love Pokemon more for opening and my girlfriend loves Pokemon, so it kind of makes more sense to go that way. But vintage Magic Boxes, vintage Magic Cards, you know, I mean, I regret it all. Spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on these cards, and in my opinion, it just kind of throw them in storage and hope something happens in the future, because I don't think anything's gonna happen in the next five years. There's gonna be lots of one ones there's gonna be one of 10s, one of 100s, and so on, and it, it's gonna be interesting. It will be, that's where the money is. The money is no longer in the old stuff, the money is in the new stuff. That's exactly the same with basketball and baseball and football today. The one-on-one -on -one Luka is worth more money than any Michael Jordan vintage card. Seriously, even a PSA 10, all uh, Michael Jordan rookie card is not equivalent to the one-on-one -on -one Luka from Prism. One-on-one -on -one Luka from Prism has a bounty anywhere between one to $2 million already. I can buy multiple, it's the same idea of the one-on-one -on -one, uh, The Ring the bounty on the ring, 2.1 million plus, as we know, that's the the bottom right now. That's multiple Black Lotuses. So like in basketball, they're doing the same thing, where a one-on-one -on -one card of a, of a current player who hasn't won anything and done anything is equivalent to multiple Michael Jordan PSA 10 rookie cards. Well, the same thing is true about the one ring versus black, alpha Black Lotuses. They're simply not as desirable anymore as they want. I mean, if you, if, I mean, just look at the money. You don't need to argue, oh, the Black Lotus has more history. No, no, I don't, I mean, yeah, it has that. It's all baked in its value. But the one-on-one -on -one ring is a one, a one. So yes, it's gonna be more worth more. And there are way more people like XQC, is he trying to pull a Black Lotus? Like he has the money to buy these packs. No, he's trying to pull a one-on-one -on -one ring. Everyone from Pokemon to Yu-Gi-Oh! Tubers to everyone, everyone is pulling, trying to pull a one-on-one -on -one ring. A, it makes good content. B, it's really easy content to make. And C, you could theoretically, like again, assuming that the ring is in one of these boxes, uh, make, you know, retire from pulling it and or make a good chunk of money. Anyway, bye guys.